we're talking about leveraging on God's favor. I want to start out by reading Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Luke 1, 26 to 28. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent Angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. So you see, there's something the favor of God does. It singles you out. And I pray that you'll be singled out in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, can favor be activated? I will tell you yes. And I'd like to show you how. Number one, ask. Pray that the Lord will show you favor in that situation. It doesn't matter how difficult it is. See, favor is a component of mercy. Amen? Favor is a component of mercy. So, ask. Pray that the Lord will show you favor in that situation. An example in the scriptures, Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11. Nehemiah prayed, he says, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servants, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cup bearer to the king. A second way that favor can be activated for you is for you to become better at what you do. Yes, to become better at what you do. Tell somebody become better. First Samuel 16, 14 to 18. Story of David. It says, Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command the servants here to search for someone who can play the lyre. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes on you, and you will feel better. So Saul's attendant, um, Saul said to his attendant, Find someone who plays well, and bring him to me. One of his servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lair. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine looking man and the Lord is with him. You remember that when you are favored, God is with you. Good. Now, so this guy, six things were said about David. Six things. He can play the lair. One, he is brave. Two, he is a warrior. Three, he speaks well. Four, he is, the boy is fine. Fine boy. Number six, the Lord is with him. Now, you see, out of those six things, there's only one thing he can't control. He can't control his fineness. Yeah? Because that would now have to be a combination of the daddy's fineness and mommy's fineness. But you see, in this world, if you have money, you'll be fine. Do you understand? There's some people, there's some people Oh, if you have something, they know they look your face. Now your hand that they look. Praise God. How many things was Jesus Christ on earth? Lawyer, carpenter, intercessor. Please start naming. King, Lord, healer, preacher, advocate. One author, one person, teacher, preacher, ever. One person, shepherd. One person. So the question is, how many things are you on earth? Because pastor is a consultant. He will let you know that if you focus on one thing, another COVID can wipe that in a way. Do you understand? Say, ah, the only thing I know how to do is to sew clothes. <laughs> because there are machines who are replacing human beings today. Lot. Let me give you a simple one. For instance, if your job is to, you are a teller in a bank, machine is going to replace you. Machine has even replaced you. Because in some banks now, they will tell you, it's only if you are collecting over 100,000 that you should enter the bank. So they say collect your money at the ATM. And this is why they are saying collect money at the ATM is because they know that ATM cannot form union and ask for salary increase. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, if we become better, it is easier for God to use us, to favor us. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. I wanted to look at that scripture. This is one of the most, a scripture, every time somebody is celebrating a birthday, I always share this scripture. 
I will send you this scripture. It says, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. And man. Jesus, first of all, increased in wisdom. Did you get that? And then in stature. And then in favor with God and man. Let me, let me just try and define that for you. When you grow in favor with God and man, there are some things that will be impossible for others, but for you it will become possible. Praise God. It doesn't matter how many prayer meetings you go for. Once you can't be trusted, you make it difficult for God to show you favor. Does this make sense? Jesus Christ grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. God first, and then man. Let me read one scripture to you. Luke 17, 7 to 10. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to it. Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servants because he did what he was told to do? (laughs) He says, so you also. When you have done, listen to this, when you have done everything you were told to do, you should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So you know, do you know the people that God, when you're asking for promotion, stop asking for promotion if you only do what you've been told to do. Did you hear what I said? You only, you are only entitled to, promis- to promotion when you go beyond the call of duty. This, this week, start by delivering more than is expected of you. Did you hear what I said? Start by delivering more. When, say, when, you tell, when they say, when should we expect this thing? And you tell them, I will deliver latest Tuesday, 6 p.m., Try, if you can, deliver on Monday, 6 p.m. You see, this thing, this thing I'm talking to you about is not, is not Christian. No. The people, there are people that I do business with in China, I don't know their name. You see, in Nigeria, you, tell, you see somebody say, by God's grace. Even when I was pastor, I said, please shut up. I don't want to hear by God's grace. I don't want to hear Lagbar alone. I don't want to hear it. That Lagbar alone, that by God's grace, keep it to yourself. Just deliver what I told you to deliver. Because the guy I'm doing business with in China does not tell me by God's grace. And my goods arrive at the right time. So, God's grace here, keep it to yourself. Be doing God's grace on your own. Just deliver. Does this make sense? So that you be, when you are a man of your word and you are good at what you do, you will have repeat business. Because there are so many people who are unreliable. But if you pray and you're reliable, you make it difficult for God. Because God will just be telling Gabriel and Jesus, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do? Praise God. A third way of activating favor is for you yourself to show favor to people. Let me read one scripture for you as I bring this to a close. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Do you want that to be what God will say to you? No, I want, you, I want that to be a loud yes. Good. Come you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. But how did this happen? It says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, 
When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? The king will reply, jump to verse 40. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did what? For me. That is how to walk yourself to that answer. If you want Jesus to say those words to you at the end of time, start feeding the hungry. What You have to ask yourself, what is life's most important question? Do you know what life's most important question is? Lord, how may I serve you? Lord, what will you have me do for you? When Saul had an encounter with Jesus when he was on his way to go and persecute the children of Israel. And he had that encounter and he became blind. One of the questions he asked God was, God, what will you have me do? But you see, Christians today are always asking God, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. There are very few people who are asking God. There are many people who are God users. There are very few people that God is using. Father, we commit ourselves into your hands today. Lord, have your way.